Dabu 7, and I want to share with you guys an amazing find that was found within Leonardo da Vinci's painting of The Last Supper. Now, this will focus not on Jesus and the religious aspect so much as, as I am asking the question, why did Leonardo da Vinci do this? He had hid this imagery, which once you see it, it is absolutely jaw-dropping. Now, this has always been controversial, and they've released in the past few years the movie The Da Vinci Code, which brought a lot of speculation and mystery into it, and they talked about the divine feminine and a lot of other things. What they did at the same time here is they mirrored and inverted this image, and it was a huge find. It caused a lot of uproar. People were like, this is a whole other image. He had to have known about this, and I agree he did. Problem here is when they inverted and mirrored this image and they released it to the public, which you can find on Wikipedia Commons, it's released to the public. I'll leave a link. They did not invert Jesus' head. You can see how the pyramid shape takes form down here, and everybody else is mirrored from the original. This is the original. But what happens when you invert it right down the middle? See this line underneath Jesus' eye? When you invert it right where you're supposed to, right down the middle, and you do the whole thing, not like they did, you do it the correct way, you get this. It is an absolutely jaw-dropping image of a transformation of Jesus Christ in this image. There are a lot of startling things that happen in this image. As you can see, he takes the third eye on the forehead. And this is real deal, folks. This reminds me of the Jesus with the eye on his head out of Eye Pet Go 2. It's exactly what it reminds me of. And the detail in it is precise to a T. This is the perfectly mirrored, right down the center version. And as you can see, all of the pyramids begin to take shape on his chest, one inverted, and some, some amazing features start to come out here. Two faces come out. One here, the face of a man, and one above it, a bearded face of a man that looks like a king wearing a crown. And once again, this isn't somebody photoshopped and put together. This is real deal. You can go to Notepad. You can copy. You can paste this. You can it, you can mirror it and invert it, and you're going to get the same thing as long as you go right down the middle. Everything is mirrored, and it is, is absolutely amazing details. Absolutely amazing details that come out of this. Uh, some people refer to it as satanic. Other people say it's not. That it's actually showing uh, the opening of the mind's eye, what is being hidden, and that there's a halo around his head, and that his face actually takes on a lion-type structure when looking at it. Also, when you go looking further above it, there seems to be the formation of a disc with a circle in the middle and, a, and wings, almost like a winged disc above his head. And then you find what many have pointed out to be looks like a Baphomet type goat head structure right here. You can see the eyes, the perfect nose, the mouth, and you can see where horns come up off of its head. It's the perfect structure for this Baphomet that they that they believe. So a lot of crazy imagery inside of this when it is inverted and it's not a hoax and it, yes it is very controversial but you've got to remember this is what Leonardo da Vinci has done this isn't to say anything else about the religion about Jesus or anything else about this this is something that da Vinci knew that he decided to lock as a secret inside of this painting until someone came along and unlocked it and once you unlock it, it is just absolutely amazing. All the detail, the pyramid. All right, Shalom. This is Har One by Nyasha Allah of the Lions Den Camp. When I say Ka Halayim, La Yahawah, Bahashim Yahawah Shai, Bahashim Havakakwadash, Mahamath. 
the belonging to the elder apostles of JMS and their elders. Shalom to you, Akim, like Watim and children that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. Uh, I want to go into this topic, man. Um, <clears throat> that was Dabu 7, um, 7 7 speaking in, uh, about this uh, Last Supper image that they have of the devil, all right? And uh, what's it called? Cesare Borgia, which was the son of the Pope of Rome, Pope Alexander the Sixth of, of the Roman Empire. All right. Um, now, what you have there is an abomination. You have a bunch of what you call in, in the painting world a collage. All right. When you start dealing with painting and Picassos and all that, you start dealing with collages to where they have a mixture of paintings mingled into one painting all right <clears throat> and now looking at that image we all know in the truth that the lord didn't look like that according to the scriptures all right let me get to that first matter of fact let's get that out of the way all right this is revelations 1 and 13 and this is the image that the, the, the vision of yahweh shai that john saw when he was on the isle of patmos revelation 1 and 13 and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, so he had a garment on, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white and woolly. Or you look at that image that they have, that Leonardo, the devil, painted. Um, then you see um, that red uh, goat hair. <laughs> but it says... His head and his hairs were white like wool, all right? So it was an afro, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, right? So he had, he had reddish eyes. <clears throat> and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in the furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. You know, so his feet, the same color as his body. So it was, it was like brass, dark brown, as if you burned it. So he's real, real dark brown. Okay, so that that's his image, and he's from the what the tribe of Judah, so his people are just like him, even though we're mixed the colors today. <clears throat> so this is his image, all right. And when he was on the earth, of course he had dark hair, just like everybody, um, all the so-called Negroes. When we were little, we had little afros, you know, little froze or curly hair, and you grow up. And it turns white. It starts turning gray when you get to about uh, 30 years old. Start getting some grays up in there, some whites. <clears throat> All right. So this is talking about Yahweh a dark-skinned man from the tribe of Judah with white and woolly hair. So we already know that, you know, this, these devils, they painted many false images. And now if you look at the movie with Moses, Moses was in the in the region of Egypt, <laughs> and Joseph looked like the Egyptians, all right, just like Jacob. So it's clear that we were dark skinned just like those Kushites, those Ethiopians, man, or Sudanese. Now, uh, the point I want to get to is um, there's a lot of points I want to touch on because in that picture, man, he had a bunch of Baphomet pictures paintings, faces, and that's no coincidence. It's an abomination. All right. And uh, this guy, Leonardo da Vinci, uh, he knew that. He was known as what you would call an atheist uh, agnostic. All right. He studied Gnosticism also through atheist, through his atheistic, atheistic pagan uh, mindset as well. So he was a pagan. A lot of people say he was a mason, but the masonry wasn't around back then. It was called paganism. All right? And they were devil worshippers. So this dude believed that uh, the Lord, Yahweh Shai, was an embodiment of Yahweh. That's that That's that uh, Holy Trinity mess. All right? Or that saying that the Most High came down here and he was just in the body as Yahweh Shai. No, it's two different entities. We know that. All right? Yahweh. And his son, Yahweh Shai. Let's get that real quick. This is uh, John 20 and 15. This is when Yahweh Shai wrote, was risen from the dead by Yahweh. All right. 
And he said it clearly, yo. Uh, um, check this out. John 20 and 15. Yahweh Shah saith unto her, talking about Mary. All right, this Mary right here, um, uh, which was not his mother, but it was Mary. Uh, she wanted to uh, give him a hug, and he told her not to because he had to be glorified for his get clean. John 20 and 15, because right, he had d just died. Yahweh Shah saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Because he showed up as a gardener. All right. So he, he could be standing right in front of you. You wouldn't even know it. Why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She She's supposing him to be a gardener. So he, he shape-shifted his face, man. Made, it look, made himself look like a, a, a gardener. This was Yahweh shot, man. All right. A, a so-called Negro from the tribe of Judah. With spiritual power, spiritual abilities. Saying unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Yahweh shall say unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, uh, Master. All right. Verse 17. Yahweh shall say unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. It was two separate beings. He had to ascend to him. You know, go to the father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father, your father, and to my God and your God. So this was Yahweh Shai saying that Yahweh is his God. All right. And our God. Okay. So two separate uh, beings right there. All right. Because you have Leonardo uh, da Vinci. Some say he was in a relationship with Cesare Borgia or whatever. But he was hired as a, um, I believe so too, but, you know, I'm not, that's not the focus. But he was hired as um, a military artist, meaning he would design weapons. All right, that's what a lot of artists would do. It would be like going online or something, designing a weapon. But they were designers um, uh, for uh, weapons. And at that moment in 1492, you know, at the same time with Christopher Columbus, all right, but then you had 1492. <clears throat> you had uh, Cesare Borgia's father, uh, Alexander the Sixth. He became pope over the Roman Empire. All right, so he ruled uh, from 1492 to like 1507. All right, to the 1500s, and mind you, 1492. All right, um, you go back four years, 1488. You got the beginning of the slave trade, the race, the race trade, racism, what you would call racism, a system of selling slaves, uh, Israelites, for their skin color. And that started with Pope Alexander, no, Pope Innocent the Eighth, all right, 1488. And um, he, sold, he, he, he had received 100 dark skinned men, or what they called Moors at the time, which were Israelites. All right. Uh, he received them as slaves from the Roman Empire, from the Pope. All right. So. Um, so that system of, of slavery and racism was put into play, put into action. And at the same moment, four years later, Pope Alexander VI took office and you get what you call the Borgia crime family, man. You can look them up on Showtime. I think they pulled that off the Internet now. All right. So. um and this dude, Cesare Borgia, yeah, man, he was he was a murderer. He he would kill, um, kill people, and he would use scapegoats, and then he would kill the scapegoat to create fear. He kept doing it consistently. And his motto was kill everybody that's in in competition with him. That's it. All right. So they they were all pagans and devil worshippers, man. And um, later on, they said ten years later, he was known as uh, beautiful and all this. Wicked shit, man. Like a damn uh, Roman uh, metro <laughs> uh, model, whatever you call that shit, man. Certain things you can't say on YouTube, but you get my point. <clears throat> um, so that's what he was known for, but he was a demon, all right? And uh, the Lord destroyed him. He plagued his dad with malaria and him as well, so that when he tried to take office, 
after his dad died in 1507, he wanted to take office and become the Pope, even though he was an illegitimate son of the Pope. You know, he, he wasn't supposed to take office, but he was going to take office. And that, it was written, it's also written in history that he killed his own brother that was going to be the Pope. So when he tried to take office, he uh, he caught malaria as well. And you know, malaria is like through mosquitoes, you know, affection of the blood cells. All right. So um, next thing you know, uh, he died. Cesare Borgia got killed by just some rat average Joe Schmoes on the street that didn't know who he was. So he died of nobody. Like nobody knew. Like uh, he was very popular in the Roman Empire, but the Lord had him die and, and be destroyed as a nobody. Like you know, by some average people that just got into a skirmish with him and they took him out of that. All right? They didn't even know who he was. <laughs> it's crazy, right? You know, um, but anyway, now this is Obadiah 1 and 6. It says, how are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up, man? It, these are all hidden abominations within that picture. Well, you got Baphomet pictures in there and, and uh, going back to the idol Baal and shit and Zeus. Zeus. That's where all that goes back to, man. Hey, Zeus. All right, go back to Zeus. The Lord's true name is Yahweh and now in these Christian Christian churches today, they're worshiping um, Baal. All right, all right. I'm gonna read that again, man. Obadiah one and six. How are the things of Esau searched out? So this is his his work. All right, the painter's fruitless work. But how are they sought out? The Lord is revealing it in these times, man. Everything they're doing is iniquity, and after the workings of Satan. All right. Um, and I ain't got to go into the picture because you can see it. That's all uh, Gnostic beliefs in there from the top where they had the uh, the pyramid and all that and the eyeball on his forehead and the baffle metal over his head. That show, man, listen, that shows you that they are um, 33rd degree masons or pagan devil worshippers because Gnostics, they believe that uh, the supreme being that's what they don't call him God or Yahweh. They say supreme being. They say they believe that he was manifest in a man's body on earth. All right. When it's really Yahweh, and he sent his son Yahweh Shai in righteousness upon the earth. All right. Now, <clears throat> these atheists or these and also Gnostic believers, they believe in the whole um, entering in of the penile gland or what? A spirit taking over the penile gland. Well, um, so they have two different beliefs. They say, hey, the Lord was just a man. Yahweh was just, they say the Messiah was just a man that was um, enlightened more than any of us. Nah, man, it was more than that. All right? Goddamn devils, man. So if you look at pictures of these Gnostics and what they believe, all right, you'll begin to see the same type of images from that picture. All right, they say it look like a lion. Well, look at this. Don't that look like one right there? Okay. And that's what they're into. All right, they believe in demons and devils entering into the mind and the body. Okay, and uh, and that's what he was trying to, that's what Leonardo da Vinci was trying to, he encoded inside of that picture. All right, when they mirrored it and it showed uh, the, the baffle medicine shit over the head, and then the, the light uh, entering into the mind and then penile gland and entering into the body and becoming like two in one. That's all their fucking paganistic beliefs right there. It's right there, man. All right, and we all know it's a false image. Let's get this real quick. All right, so um, let me get this. It's probably Sakari, one of Sakari and them uh, favorite scriptures. You know, they don't like the book of Hebrews. Well, the book of Hebrews rebukes Esau as well. All right. So Hebrews 12 and 16. Lest there be any fornicator. All right. So they are idolaters, man. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. So there's no nation on the earth as as profane 
and I uh, 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 into fornication or spiritual idolatry than Esau. Man, they're the only nation, main nation, that took the scriptures. And uh, let me get this. All right, this happened with who? Antiochus Epiphanes, who called himself God, <laughs> and 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 took our our books, and uh, he studied them. So he can try to put and insert in their their doctrine and their their philosophies, and even go as far as painting uh, images and putting their idols into our books and stuff like that. All right. It says First Maccabees three and forty eight, and laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen. So these are heathens, man. Leonardo's a heathen. Cesare Borgia is a heathen. All right, his dad as well. Wherein the heathen has sought to paint the likeness of their images, man. So they, they paint the likeness of their uh, idols, man. Yeah, and demons and shit. Cause that's all you saw with number horns on that picture. All in the, you know. Even the one with the crown, that shit look like, that joint like some damn Elamite, uh, Canaanite, Egyptian pagan uh, idol. All right, that they were worshiping, man. Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So the earth is given into their hands. The Roman Empire, look at it. It's spoken of in Daniel chapter 7. All right, they took over and ruled the world. And, and first Maccabees with Esau, uh, Alexander, started the Greek Empire. All right, so they've been ruling in the Roman Empire. So they took over the whole world, been given into their hand. The Lord said, the prince of this world cometh, and he have nothing in him. Nothing in him, man. So he's, the prince of this world is Esau. All right. And at that time, he was talking about uh, Titus and Vespasian. So it says what? He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? So no other nation took the scriptures and painted the likeness of their images and pushed it all around the world and forced it on the other nations and tried to show themselves as God and, and also putting their paganistic and d demonic idols and shit and demons all in the damn paintings and pictures and icons and in the book, you know. Even in the scriptures, they put amen in, in there and that's an Egyptian uh, idol. It's supposed to be Amun, right? Not with a U, because, you know, these these damn devils, man, they wicked. All right, and due to their due to their Gnostic and atheistic beliefs, they could, they would say that anybody's God, just like these Egyptologists, you're God, you're God, you could be God, anybody could be God, the five percenters. The Lord said, ye are gods, yeah, we are powers, but Yahweh is our power. All right, and his son is Yahweh Shah. That's our power as well, under Yahweh. That's why Yahweh Shah said it. I go unto the Father, my his God and our God as well. All right, spoken of in John, they say uh, Yahweh Shah was a power himself, and he was with the powers. All right, so uh, it says this Second Thessalonians two and four. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, man. That's what they do. And they're being revealed. They're really being revealed, man. A man of sin. I'm starting from there. Second Thessalonians 2 and 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, 70 AD. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So they're being revealed. And they're the children that's going into perdition. Who, who opposeth and exalteth himself. So they're opposing Yahweh and they're trying to exalt themselves above uh, above God. All right, above Yahweh Shai. Uh, and calling themselves God. Sheesh. Who, so, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or power or that is worshipped. See, they want to even be worshipped. That's why they put themselves up as the image of, of, of the Messiah. And they put up this demon, Caesar Bourget. So they'd be worshiping their people, what you would call 
Edomite supremacy. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. See that? So that's these devils. I always say, if not, where and who is he? They even in Jerusalem, in our land, claiming that they're the true people, claiming that they're the gods. All right, they exalt the, themselves above the stars. The stars represent the children of Israel. All right. Now, um, so this is an opposition to the Lord. This is a blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. That's what they're doing. They're blaspheming the truth. And it's an opposition and it's an exaltation of themselves. But the Lord said, the pride of thy heart has deceived thee. Thou, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rocks. That's their dwelling. In the clefts of the rocks. It's like a snake. All right. And two thirds of our people, they're so stupid. Most of them, they follow after that image. They're still under the curses. Deuteronomy 28. All right. Deuteronomy 28, where it said our people are going to uh, worship wood and stone. You know? And they wear the cross and the crucifix around their chest when that's not the, the, the not supposed to represent the cross. That represents Tammuz, that T, and they have they have this devil on their on their neck. Dark skinned brothers wearing the Edomite around their neck. And I always say this, man. If it was a uh, if the Lord died in the electric chair, they, these idiots be wearing an electric chair around their neck. They glorifying his death. All right. So back to these, these demons, uh, Leonardo, uh, the demon that painted this abomination, man. All right, geometric, uh, um, artistic way of displaying this collage of demonic abominations, man. Hosea 2 and 16, and it shall be at, the, at that day, say if Yahweh, that thou shalt call me, is she, meaning husband, and shall call me no more by Ali. All right, they're not going to be doing that. That's what we. That's what times when everybody can see that picture and say, hey, that's clearly Masonic. It's clearly paganistic, man. And if you read the scriptures and see it, you know, Yahweh is a dark-skinned man. And now with white and woolly hair from the tribe of Judah. All right. And he had nothing to do with that wickedness. He would never. Um, he didn't want people painting images of him anyway. Of likenesses of things in heaven. All right. But there are paintings of him. They had the paintings in the catacombs. I'll show that at the end. All right. I always show that one. The catacombs of Rome. The hollows or the graves of the true Jews uh, uh, in the Roman Empire. The Israelites. Okay. They built grave sites and painted images. Just like, you know, you got brothers that draw and paint images of the Lord, but we don't worship it. And we try to make it accurate according to the scriptures. You know, it's called a depiction or an icon. All right. But Esau has something called iconoclasm, which means the destruction of icons. Chasm, chasm meaning destruction and icon meaning like a picture or a painting. So they went around destroying all our icons uh, uh, with the Renaissance period. All right, the rebuilding of, of their nation in, in the 14 to 1600s. All that time where Cesare Borgia was ruling. They painted him as the, the token Edomite boy. All right, so for I will take away the names of Baalim out of her mouth and they shall no more be remembered in that by their name, man. All right, so um, now today you take Ba'ali, and today that name has been uh, changed to, uh, uh, well, the Roman Empire was Zeus, and then from the Roman Empire, it was changed to uh, Jesus. Right there, man. So these idiots are worshiping uh, the Lord wrongfully. All right, uh, Romans... Uh, 10. All right. It's the scripture say, uh, even if the Lord cursed them or if he blessed them, two thirds of our people, they would still give them the wrong praise 
and cry out to him. They would cry out to idols. That's why the Lord said his, his elect are not going to call him uh, Jesus and all that, man. We're going to call him by his true name. The scriptures say the elect shall know my name. All right, we're going to deal with him in spirit and in truth, according to the scriptures. The scriptures say he's a dark-skinned man from the tribe of Judah. Romans 10 and uh, 2. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of Yahweh, but not according to knowledge. See how people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So they're being destroyed by following that this abomination. Bowing down to these pictures, praying to them, keeping them in their house, wearing it on their clothes, putting it on their album, putting it around their neck. You know, all over social media, you see those images of a damn a red uh, Edomite with red hair, long, stringy hair, and it's Cesare Borgier in a glorified image that was initially painted by Leonardo da Vinci, who was his military art specialist that he hired in 1492 when his dad became Pope. You know, the rich Edomite son, you know how that go. All right, so this is a real, um, all right, now, I always like to bring this one out, but this is this is the most accurate one, man, and the way I saw this, I was watching a um, uh, documentary years ago, like years ago, man, you know, I'm talking about like 2008, <laughs> and uh, this Edomite, she was talking on there. And she was going through the catacombs and she pointed at this picture and she said, look, this is a good shepherd and let's move on. It's like, no, 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 no. Do the moonwalk. Back up. Oh, he's dark skin. <laughs> it's like he's right there and they don't want to talk about it. All right. So this is more a better depiction of him. He had uh, dark hair. Okay. And now he would have like white and woolly hair. All right. Um, that would be more of a depiction of a Judite, a Yahweh Shai. Okay. All right, I said the Good Shepherd. Catacombs of uh, Domitilia, Rome, Italy. All right, and they whitewashed a lot of the images. But uh, yeah, so the Good Shepherd, that's Yahweh Shai. And they, they made all these. Um, abominations to deceive the people. All right, Micah 5 and 10. That's why the scriptures say we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness in high and low places, man. All right, and we're set up to the weapons of our warfare and not carnal. All right, but are mighty through Yahweh to the pulling down of strongholds, and those strongholds are in the mind. All right, through these images and these uh, statues and shit that these people have created and created idols, idolatry. Micah 5 and 10, And it shall come to pass in that day, saith Yahweh, that I will cut off thy horses out of the midst of thee and I will destroy thy chariots. All right, all their, uh, their um, traffic, all right, it's going to come to a, a halt. And I will cut off the cities of thy land and throw down all thy strongholds. All right, and even today, the spiritual strongholds, the Lord going to throw them down as well. Especially the ones that leaped out of the mouth of the, of the frog or the dragon, like a frog, which would be the, <clears throat> the religion, the military infrastructure, and their banking systems. All right, the policing systems and their religious uh, deceptions. So the Lord gonna cut that, cut all of it off. Those are the strongholds, and I will cut off witchcrafts out of thine hand, and thou shalt have no more soothsayers, man. Thy graven images also will I cut off. So even the, the preachers and their soothsayers, the Egyptologists, the pagans, the all the idolaters, man, fornic fornicators. The Lord gonna cut them off, and thy standing images out of the midst of thee. And thou shalt no more worship the work of thy hand. All right, so talking about two thirds of our people that are worshiping the work of their hands, man, that they created, all these idols and shit, and paintings. Um, 
Isaiah 31 and 5, as birds flying, so will Yahweh of hosts defend Jerusalem. So the Lord is going to defend his elect that believe in him, Yahweh Shai, all right? Defending also, he will deliver it, and passing over, he will preserve it. So the scriptures say, every Revelations uh, 1 and 7, every eye shall see him. So we're all going to see, everybody going to see him as he is. But at, by that time, the elect are going to be like him. So we ain't going to need no pictures and stuff, man. All right. Turn ye unto him from whom the children of Israel have deeply revolted, man. So they're still revolting because they have no knowledge. Okay. Um, I seen my cousin the other day block me on social media and I look on her page. Um, I didn't even know, know she blocked me, but whatever. I look on her page, she got all kind of Jesus stuff on there. I'm like, ah, I see why. All right. For in that day, every man shall cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which your own hands have made unto you for a sin, man. You know, idol worship, abominations and shit. They got demons all painted in there, hidden in the background in secrecy. All right, Luke 12 and 2. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be made known. All right. So the things that scripture say, how are the things that Esau sought up? Well, we're in the time of revealing. The Lord revealing all their works, everything they've done. All right. It's being revealed today to show that they are the devil, the deceivers. Get that. All right. Second Thessalonians 2 and 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, the spirit of his truth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, man. So the truth dispels lies any day. And this lie is being exposed, that saying that the Lord was, was an Edomite. Or well, look like a so-called Caucasian. The Lord was a dark-skinned man from the tribe of Judah. All right, and he put up this image, um, this demonic image with all kind of Baphomet goat heads and um, demons and all kind of shit in it, man. Verse 9, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, man. So this picture is a, is a de deceitful unrighteous um lying wonder <laughs> and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved so it's all about the truth and for this cause Yahweh shall send them strong delusion that they shall believe a lie so they believe that lie and look what's behind it all kind of demons and devils all right and idols that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in our righteousness. They had pleasure in that damn pain. We've seen it growing up. You try to tell it to them today, like, no, my pastor don't have that up in the church. Man, listen. Well, what's his name? What's the Lord's name if thou canst tell? Proverbs 30 and 4. They still say Jesus. Like, no, man. The Lord's name is Yahweh Shot in the Hebrew. All right, man. With this, was Ms. Solomon 15 and 3. For to know thee is perfect righteousness, man. So to know Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. That's righteousness. But two thirds of our people, they're gonna a lot of them are gonna believe that delusion and move in that way of unrighteousness, man. All right. But to know the Lord in truth, to worship him in spirit and in truth, you know, say that to say that he didn't come in the flesh and that he has no color, that's a lie. You have to worship him in spirit and in truth. All right. For to know thee is perfect righteousness, yea, to know thy power is the root of an immortality. Man, to know thy strength, the strength is who Yahweh Bashim El Shah. All right. For neither did the mischievous invention, so this was a mischievous invention by Esau, Leonardo da Vinci, the Masonic um, picture that he made with all kind of coatings in it. So it's a, it's a mischievous invention. All right. For neither did the mischievous invention of men uh, deceive us. 
so it didn't deceive the elect. Nor an image spotted with diverse colors. That's what that image is. It's spotted with diverse colors, all these different colors from Leonardo da Vinci. The painter's fruitless work. So that's his that was his fruitless work, man. It bears no fruit. All right. His works are are, are are vain. The painter's fruitless work, man. The sight whereof enticeth fools. So looking at it, they're worshiping. Or they they believe it in their mind. To lust after it. And so they desire the form of a dead thing that hath no breath. Both they that make them, Leonardo da Vinci, you know, they that desire them, the people whom that deception is made to deceive, the deceiver and the deceiver are Yahweh's man. They belong, we, they belong to him. All right. Both they that make them, they, they that desire them, and they that worship them. Wow. So if you desire it, if you make it, or you worship it, are all lovers of evil things. All right. So they did not uh, love the truth, as the scripture said a minute ago. They received not the love of the truth, but instead what? They were lover of lovers of evil things and are worthy to have such things to trust upon. 